saytechnologies.com is a site where Tesla stockholders can add questions that then get voted on as potential questions for the earnings call next Wednesday the 19th. I just spent some time on that site, and there's some really, really excellent questions on that list. And But after I read through all of them, I realized that almost all were short-sighted, typical kinds of things that people who are playing the market daily or who are jumping in and out weekly or monthly uh, would be looking uh, at, the kind of questions they would care about. And I care about those because, as you know, I do do some leaps, and uh, although they are very, very long out there, I still really enjoy uh, the give and take of the market on a daily basis, weekly basis, et cetera. So the questions were interesting to me as well. However, there's potentially a much better list that maybe I think Elon would even approve of that would be um, more long-sighted, more um, looking out there, thinking in terms of the mission and such. Um, he might not be able to answer all those questions, as you'll see when I give you my list, but I can tell you right now, I do think you'd appreciate these questions more. This is Randy Kirk. Um, you can like this channel. I'd certainly appreciate it. Uh, subscribe, um, hit the notify button, and please join my Patreon. Uh, it helps to support the channel so that I can afford to continue to do this. Okay, so keeping in mind my five pillars. Say it now in unison. No, I'm kidding. Some of you may not know what my five pillars are. My five pillars are those stock, I mean, those parts of Tesla that are really consequential. They're the big ones. Now, the other six aspects of Tesla, things like uh, um, the battery, uh, I'm sorry, the um, charging stations, um, the insurance, et cetera, they're big businesses and they're going to be bigger businesses. And if they were split off, they'd be significant, but they're not split off. And so they're going to be rounding errors when it comes to these five. So the five are Tesla Optimus, Tesla RoboTaxi. Does that give you some uh, reason to, th those are the top two. And does that make you stop and wonder why Elon now calls the company a uh, an AI company with a specialization in robotics? <laughs> so those are my top two, Optimus and RoboTaxi. Then you've got the auto and light truck division. Then you've got the large truck division, which will be huge. And which was almost, I think there was only one question asked about the large truck division. And then you have energy storage, which unsurprisingly is starting to become something. There's a lot of questions about, which I started asking these questions about uh, seven months ago when the book, The Elon Musk Method came out, Mission came out, which if you haven't read it yet, you need to read it because this is the state, this is the channel where we're talking about stuff before anybody else talks about it. We were first to talk about Lathrop. We were first to talk about the idea that Optimus is probably already working in the factories and that they'll do a million of them next year and a thousand this year, et cetera. So many, so many others I could go on and on. So let's look now though at these five, taking into consideration the five pillars, what would the, what would an investor and a true investor, somebody that's in for the long, long term be interested in? And somebody who's interested in following the company as an organization, as a as a business, because long-term is what counts, as Elon mentioned in Twitter the other day, those who are in it for the long-term get the biggest rewards. So, and then also using first principles thinking. All right, so you ready to go? Let's talk about it. My first question would be, what is the average cost of a Model Y when ramped based on the expected costs of raw materials coming up in the next month or two months or three months. In other words, in the, in the current situation and going forward with what we know today, because you can never know what's going to happen with the raw materials. Look what happened to lithium just in the last uh, six months. So um, what is the cost, the average cost of a Model Y? I'm not sure he would answer that question. Maybe he could give an answer that would give us a hint, a theory, an approach. But let's face it, Model Y right now is by far the greatest volume uh, of what's happening at Tesla, by far the greatest profit of what's happening at Tesla. So it would be nice to have uh, a little more information about what those margins are, because as we're seeing the price fluctuations up and down, as we're seeing the questions arising about uh, margin fluctuation, as we're looking at the average cost of the sale price of the vehicle going up and down, which would affect the ultimate margin, when we're looking at all those things, then knowing what it's costing to produce one of these Model Ys would be very, very helpful. And so much has changed 
in just six months on the cost of the Model Y, including the ramps at Austin and Berlin, uh, the new uh, technologies that are being used in both of those locations in terms of the cost of batteries and the cost of raw materials. So much has gone up and has, so many other things have gone down. Uh, and right now, most things you would think in terms of cost of goods would be much, much lower. Plus, we've been told by leadership at Tesla that we should be looking at the overall operating cost, uh, operating margin, uh, which would mean they're focused like a laser on getting overhead costs down as well. Okay, that's number one. That's my number one question. I think that is the most important question going on at Tesla today. That is not 2030 thinking. That would be more like 2025 thinking. So that would be huge, huge, huge from now to 2025. That's pretty long range. Okay, number two. Will Giga Austin and Giga Berlin ramp to 1 million Model Ys each? Also a 2025-2026 question. So is that the plan right now? We got the, a bunch being made in Berlin, a bunch being made in Shanghai, but both of those factories seem to be kind of where they're going to be. But we know that they're expanding Austin and Berlin. Is the ultimate goal for both of those factories about a million Model Ys? That would be really, really useful information to know in being able to put together some kind of, a, of an analysis uh, for at least the next couple of years with regard to the profitability of Tesla. All right, number three, what are the expected average margins on mega packs? So the world, I mean, I love Dylan Loomis, but yesterday he was throwing out his expectations on mega packs at only 20% margins. I think all of the reporting is suggesting that it's at least 40 and it might be higher. So that's a big difference. And we may, we're may we probably not going to find that out with just the earnings themselves next Wednesday. We're going to have to wait uh, for either the next quarter or the next quarter before we can really start to see what the margins are on the mega packs. But what a great question. What are the margins on the mega packs? Let's get it on the table. Let's stop... Stop arguing about it and having a bunch of people not knowing. Uh, if you want to put a good model together of the future of Tesla, you need to know what those margins really are. Um, then uh, associated with that, do you expect to build 25, 40 uh, gigawatt hour facilities similar to Lathrop? That would get us to one terawatt hour. Is that the expectation? That's what uh, I believe. That's what I believe I've heard them say. It may not be 25, all 40, some of them might be 100, and therefore you might only need 20. I put my list together and did a video on it last week, if you want to look at that. Um, but uh, basically, um, is the plan to get to one terawatt hour by 2030 or sooner? That's the question, really. And then does that mean there's going to be 25 to 40 different factories around the world and then what is the expected, when are those announcements going to be coming? How many of them will come this year, next year, et cetera? Now, that is a 2030 question, as well as a 2026 question, 25 question, as well as an immediate question. So those that would be taking care of all three types of investor at the same time. And then, um, okay, so then the next one is, what is the expected selling price and the margin expectations for semi? As I mentioned, there was probably, I don't know, 100 questions over on that website that I mentioned earlier. And out of that 100 questions, I think there was one on semi. And yet, according to me, and I could be completely wrong because Tesla hasn't said this yet, according to me, semi is one of the five pillars and is eventually going to be doing 300 million, I'm sorry, 300 billion to 400 billion in sales with very high margins. I can't imagine why not. It just it's, it would baffle my mind that they wouldn't be shooting towards manufacturing a million semi trucks and large trucks by 2030, um, maybe sooner and maybe more. Uh, Brian Wong has put together a couple of uh, blogs in the last couple of days on his on his blog post, uh, and he he thinks it's going to be a lot more than a million, but he's willing to take a million. He said to me the other day. All right, so. Um, but, but we don't, still don't know what the selling price is on the semi. So could you shoot out at least a ballpark se uh, selling price for the semi? And then what is your projected plan for semi in, uh, and margins? I'm sorry. And then what is your projected production plan for semi in 2030? Are you shooting for a million? Are you shooting for a half a million? Are you shooting for two? Whatever the number is, it'd be nice. We have it for like everything else. 
maybe we're not 100% clear on Megapack, but a lot of these things, we kind of know where you're headed, Elon. Please let us know where you're headed with the semis as well. And then are you, are you still projecting 50,000? Uh, this is a, 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 a more of a short-term question, but are you still projecting 50,000 um, out of uh, the Sparks manufacturing facility in 2024, which was your earlier your earlier thought is that that's how many you would make. Is that still on the on the table? All right. The next one would be, uh, what is the limiting factor on full self-driving level five? And what are the keys needed to overcome those? Now, this is definitely a long-term question because when FSD drops, when FSD finally gets to level five, um, you and I are rich, <laughs> at least if you're invested. <laughs> the stock, if there's if there's one um, thing that we could be pretty clear would be a catalyst, it would be that Elon Musk's announced that you can now drive your car from the back seat starting tomorrow uh, if you have FSD. Uh, that would change everything and the stock would go nuts. Um, of course, it might take a couple of three weeks for for Chuck Cook and some others to do some video showing that in fact, this is true, but let's face it, that would be massive. So what is, what are, or what is, is there one limiting factor? Are there multiple limiting factors or what is in the way right now? Is it just engineering? Is it just data? Is it just compute? Is it just uh, uh, doing multiple, multiple iterations of, of uh, edge cases over and over again until we get there? I mean, what is really currently in the way? There must, by now we must know. They must know what's really keeping this from happening. Okay, so what are those limitations and what would the expectations be in terms of overcoming those limitations? What are those keys? Um, so that would be the, that next question. That's huge. All right, next one is, is Randy Kirk, some YouTube comment, commenter, is he crazy? Or will you start offering Optimus, Optimi? <laughs> will you start offering Optimi for sale in 2024 or even sooner? Is that a, is that a possibility? Not a possibility. Is that your expectation? Is that your plan? Will you start offering this product by now, by by 2024? Um, when do you expect mass production? Is that 2024 when you start offering it for sale? This would be again. A, I believe it would be a market mover. Um, there's an awful lot of people that aren't paying very much attention to Optimus right now, but I think if he put a, a day on it and said, oh yeah, yeah, we're going to have a, we'll have AI day in September, October, uh, at AI day, we'll do the reveal on Optima, Optimus, and then we'll start manufacturing it in 20, first quarter of 2024. I think that'd move the market, but long-term it's the number one thing Elon is doing, according to him. It's the number one. Okay. So if they start doing it in 2024, then it's going to move markets now and then, and then who knows what happens to the price of Tesla over the next five or six years. All right, next. When do you anticipate the 4680 in Austin will be fully ramped? So based on your, so based on what you know today, you're, you've been ramping, ramping, ramping. Do you think it'll be ramped by the end of the year? Do you think it'll be first quarter of next year? Do you think it's almost there now? Uh, maybe you could throw in a couple of the uh, limiting factors again. What are you trying to overcome? Is there some real problem? Some people were asking about, have you figured out the dry cathode, da, da, da. You know, I don't know all the chemistries and things. It's kind of over my pay grade, but I do know that there was a couple of few things in the way evidently that they wanted to experiment on according to the last conversation on the subject. Um, and so what, where are we now? And is it, is it realistic to think that they will be fully ramped, uh, producing 100 gigawatt hours by the end of this year or early next year? Is that in the plan? That would be big, 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 big news for the very, very long term, because of course he's shooting for one terawatt and every one of those batteries that they make is a battery they don't have to buy and is a battery that qualifies for the investment, uh, whatever, reduction act. I can't remember the name of it because it's so stupid. Anyway, IRAs, but there's a lot of money involved for Tesla and that means for stockholders. All right. And then finally, how many more gigafactories do you expect to build now that you've been able to reduce the footprint so much with regard to the production of vehicles? So if you have the footprint, does that mean you don't, does that mean you'll be able to use get way more vehicles out of existing factories than you were originally planning for. 
does that mean maybe we're only looking at 10 factories total in order to do 20 mil million vehicles, uh, say 2 million vehicles, vehicles out of each? And then if that's the case, if we're looking at fewer factories, do you have kind of a theory at least with regard to how quickly those factories would we, we would start to turn some some earth and uh, begin to put up uh, tilt up, build, begin to put up the walls? Um, you know, if it's only uh, five more factories, uh, we could easily be looking at one a year for five years and get to the twenty million without even without a blink. If they still need fifteen more factories, that's a whole other story. Or or even ten more factories would be much more difficult, like two a year. Uh, to get to the numbers that they need to get to. All right, and then, um, uh, yes, so I think those are my questions. I believe, let me know in the comments, were these first principles based? Uh, did you have questions that you think are even better than these, are, are equal to these, but that I didn't ask, that should have been asked based on first principles thinking and on long-term thinking? Um, and or did was, were any of these questions wrong? Should I have asked them differently or in a different, you know, is, is there, was there, was I confused? Maybe the answers are already out there and I just don't know them. Anyway, let me know all those things. You know I'll answer your almost 100% of the questions that make any sense at all. And uh, then, of course, I'd love for you to join Patreon. Look, tomorrow morning, I am going to do a video on something that's been happening right in front of us, something that has been as dramatic as heck. As heck. Um, it's changing everything. Um, and we all know it. It, it, it's not it's not a secret. I'm not going to be revealing some huge secret. No, I'm going to be revealing what we already know that has way more impact than I think most people are thinking. The it, Anyway, join me tomorrow morning and see what I'm talking about. <laughs> and, and, and until then, uh, it's been great talking to you.